My name is Mark Robin Geyer. I have an MD and a PhD in genetics. Uh, I spent 10 years of work at the National Institutes of Health, was one of the originators of the genetic engineering, which I'm not so sure I was happy to, to be accredited with, but I was a fairly well-known scientist at the NIH. Following that, um, I was a professor at Johns Hopkins University, uh, an, an assistant professor in the department of OBGYN as a geneticist, and I've also been an assistant professor at Uniform Services University of the Health Sciences. In addition to being a geneticist, I've been interested in vaccine safety and efficacy for 30 or more years, and I have worked and spoken to it by invitation to the Institute of Medicine on six or seven occasions, have worked with the FDA, and was one of the leading proponents, and there really only were four of us that did this, to try to get rid of the, the vaccine DTP, diphtheria pertussis tetanus, uh, and replace it with DTAP, which it has been done. You can't buy DTP in the United States anymore. The A means uh, acellular. It means that it's a purified whooping cough vaccine. The old vaccine was so bad that virtually every child who got it got a high fever. In fact, if you remember, if your listeners remember, when you had your child vaccinated with that vaccine, they gave an antipyretic, that is something for fever, as they gave the vaccine, and they said, your child's going to be sick for three days. Well, that was because everybody got sick from that vaccine. The new vaccine, DTAP, only 3% get sick. So we made, and they called me anti-vaccine because of that. I wasn't anti-vaccine, I was trying to improve it. Um, over the years, I have approximately 150 peer-reviewed uh, papers. I've been invited to speak before the U.S. Congress. I worked with them for three years on this issue. I've spoken before other Congresses around the world. For example, Chile. Senate invited me to go there and, and, and advise them on vaccines. I've spoken in major conferences all over the world. Um, and I have a background in this, and I, and I am not anti-vaccine. One of my papers is why we cannot stop giving polio vaccine, because it would be too dangerous. Uh, they want to stop, but that's dangerous. I'm not anti-vaccine, but in, the, in our society, if you try to improve God, it's blasphemy. And they act like this is God. I want to improve the vaccines. You can't criticize the vaccines, because you're criticizing their God. And, and what they say is, and I think they understand that I'm not anti-vaccine, but they say that I'm, I'm a threat to public health because even though I give a talk and I say I'm pro-vaccine, somebody might hear me and hear some of the problems and therefore they wouldn't vaccinate their children and all their children will die. Well, first of all, they don't all die. I mean, it's, it's a very rare thing that infectious disease. And secondly, it's not my fault that they poisoned the vaccines and I won't take the blame for telling people the truth. They have to take the blame. They're the ones that put the poison in. I'm just telling you that it's there and it is there. But they blame me for telling you because if I tell you, you might not take the vaccine. That's really interesting logic. You know? yeah. Particularly influenza vaccine causes a, a disorder called Guillain-Barre syndrome. It's an autoimmune system uh, problem in which you attack your own nerves and you get paralysis, usually descending from the top to the bottom. It's usually not fatal. Usually you end up paralyzed and you recover some of the mobility, but some people die. This was most famous in 1976 when they had that big influenza epidemic, in which there was only one case, and it really wasn't a case, but they, they tried to give 30 million people the shot. And by the way, they paid $8 billion in damages. It's been known even before that, that, that influenza vaccine causes Guillain-Barre syndrome. Now, that's not to say that influenza vaccine couldn't be good. If it was efficacious and it present, prevented, let's say, 10,000 lives, and you got 100 cases of Guillain-Barre syndrome, Maybe it would be worth it, especially since it's not clear how you avoid it. But of course, uh, when you have an influenza vaccine, it's 9% efficacious. And if you believe that, it, it prevents you know, 10 deaths or whatever, some small number of deaths, and it causes 100 cases of Guillain-Barre syndrome. And you didn't tell anybody, by the way, that they could get Guillain-Barre syndrome. And now you're forcing people to take it, whether they like it or not. That's a different story. It shouldn't be done. We, we've published on that, but this one was actually the CDC published on it. They agreed that it caused... Uh, an excess of 1.7 per million, if I remember right, cases of Guillain-Barre syndrome. Back then or, or come that, was, that just came out in the last couple of years. But they also agreed back, well, there, there have been publications by them and us otherwise, uh, other years too. It, it turns out some flu vaccines are higher than others. It depends on the strain. And it's, you understand one of the problems of flu, flu vaccines, which is our law says that to bring out a vaccine, you have to do two double-blind field trials to show efficacy, and you have to show long-term safety. That's been done on DPT and DTAP and all the other vaccines. How do you do it on influenza? 
Well, they meet in the spring or, 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 or late winter, and they pick strains for next year. How do you test whether those, that vaccine works against those strains that hasn't come yet? At first, they might be wrong on which strains come. And even if they're right, how do you test it ahead of time? And how do you do long-term safety testing? And the answer is they don't. And when I confront them with them, they say, well, Dr. Gaia, you can't do that. I just told you you can't, can't do that. Well, my answer to that is the law doesn't say you should do it if it's convenient. The law says you have to do it. And if you don't do it, you have to tell people that it's an experimental vaccine. It's never been tested. All they do is they give uh, a few people the vaccine to see if you make antibody. That has no prediction whatsoever whether it's really going to work or not. First, you don't even know if it's the right strain. Secondly, even if it's the right strain, you don't know if it's going to work. And third, you, you have about two weeks to evaluate its safety. So they don't have any safety. So they're giving, they're giving 300, they want to give 300 million doses of influenza vaccine. That's to every man, woman, and child now they recommend it. With no safety testing and no efficacy testing. And also, there's another issue. If you, if you follow their recommendations, you take, pregnant women take the, the vaccine. So you get it as a fetus. Then you get it at six months. Then you get it a year and two and three and four and every year for the rest of your life. So if you live to be 80, you've had 82 shots of influenza. Where's the safety study that you can give the same vaccine, similar type vaccine, 82 times safely? We all know the theoretical risk. You might become immune to it. You may become autoimmune to it. They have no such studies. They haven't studied that at all. They're just going to do it because they're experimenting on our lives and our children. It's good for them. It makes them a lot of money. And, and understand, you notice I mentioned influenza. And I, I talk about influenza and there are lots of other vaccines. The CDC is not in the vaccine industry. The CDC is in the, in the business of giving flu vaccines. And you know what I mean by that. Sure, they, they, they do all the vaccines. But if you count them up, you know, there, there's 20 million childhood vaccines a year. There's 300 million influenza vaccines a year. Which one do you think matters to them monetarily and power-wise? The 20 million or the 300 million? So they're promoting flu vaccines, and unfortunately, flu is the wrong thing to vaccinate against. It's easy, to, and vaccine 101. If you have a disease that's reasonably serious, because if it's a minor disease, you don't bother making a vaccine. A serious disease that if you get it and you recover, you don't get it again. An example of that would be smallpox really lethal disease, but everybody knew once you got it, you never got it again, you could possibly vaccinate a population and protect them. But if you have a disease that you get this year and it doesn't protect you next year and doesn't protect you next year, you're chasing your tail. That's why they have to try to guess. They don't know if it works. That's a terrible thing to make vaccines for. And the most of vaccine eff effort is on this product, of which, incidentally, we have multiple other ways of treating now. And actually, the true death rate, we suspect from, from data, probably is in the six to 800 range in the United States. And there was an epidemic this year, maybe it was 1,200 this year. It's not, it's not 36,000. And when you get down to, to 600 and you have 9% efficacy, if you believe it, then you save 54 lives, let's say, at a cost of over a billion dollars and at a cost of giving 300 million shots. That doesn't make any sense. You could spend that money and save a lot more lives. And that's assuming that there are no side effects. I didn't deduct for the side effects. That's insane. That's, that's like the, uh, you give a man a hammer, he thinks everything's a nail. Let's work on something that actually you know, happens. Uh, just to give an example, do you know anybody that, that has died of the flu? I haven't met anybody that knows anybody that dies of the flu. I'm sure there are a few. You know anybody that died of breast cancer? You know anybody that died of an auto accident? You know anybody that died in a shooting accident? You know anybody that died of a heart attack? I mean, those are the, the people in the United States die of those illnesses. Why are we spending all our time and money on, I'm willing to, to give accolades to the, to the public health, they got rid of infectious disease. But it's gone now. There's only one infectious disease that's important, and, and that's AIDS. And it's 20th, by the way, as a killer. So it's not a top one. And they don't have a vaccine. Beyond that, I don't even know where these others rank. They're so low. But they're spending all our health care dollars on, you know, 12 deaths here and three deaths there. Why don't we work on something that's important? Some of the, the things that really matter to American public. It's ridiculous to, to have a whole, whole industry and all they do, CDC primarily does vaccines and they spend millions and billions of dollars on vaccines to prevent infectious disease, which basically we don't have much of.